1021 Productions. had some lunch here in the shop uh, at work it's a quiet night it's a Wednesday night so it's uh, it's really quiet there's only just the retirees here tonight so just had a bite to eat I'm gonna show you guys the most expensive freebie that I found so far it's been a nice big shop all kinds of toys golf carts everywhere There's my cart. So I just had to move some patio stones there not too long ago, so I had to move about 20 of them. Those buggers are heavy. So this is it. This bike I found up by the dumpsters, and it was all covered in what I thought was green grass clippings. Turned out it was pulled out of the lake. So uh, I uh, brought it back to Tentopolis and I fixed it up a little bit, and uh, what I had to do was I had to replace the front tube. See, there's still some green on there too. Some seaweed. So what I had to do was, oop, wrong side. I had to replace the tube and because it was slashed right here, or it was, they jumped off a curb or hit a curb or something like that. So it broke the tube and the tire as well. So I put duct tape on the inside of the tire and uh, uh, went to Home Hardware in Innisfail and got a new tube for it. Um, you can see this valve stem back here. It's a tiny little valve stem. So a regular air compressor doesn't fit on there. You have to get some sort of an adapter. So uh, they're proprietary tubes, rims, and tires. And I uh, did some looking online and I found out this, this bike. It's a Jamis Dakar XLT 1.0. And looking on their website, um, I found one very similar to this for, I think it was $1,500. Saw them used online for uh, $500, and one of their most expensive bikes, it's a street racing bike, um, was uh, $2,300. So, this bike has been beaten up. There used to be a shock right in here, but I guess it either broke or it was replaced with just a piece of, I think it's 3 8 inch flat steel so um, I used it last Friday and Saturday to uh, chase the kids around the park so they they play they've been playing this game apparently it's been going on for like 20 or 30 years some of the adults that I've been talking to here they say that uh, they used to play it back in the day and so uh, and security would grab them by the collar and take them home to their parents but you know times have changed so the kids are supposed to be back at their uh, their trailers or at you know a neighbor's trailer for that matter at 11 p.m. if you're under eight or if they're under 18, and so uh, you know nine times out of ten that doesn't happen. Um, and like I said, it's been going on for 20 some years or 30 some years. So you know the the parents know the tradition and they let the kids play. And so uh, basically the way I get them to go home is I chase them around for about an hour, an hour and a half. And uh, it usually tuckers them out at the end of the day, and then they eventually go home. Um, every once in a while, I'll deputize a couple of them, and I'll get them to come around and gather up the other kids with me, so they seem to like that. So, but uh, I, I tired them out on uh, Friday night. I tired them out because um, they didn't come out Saturday night. So they said they were going to come out, and then I went looking around, and I spent probably about 20 or 30 minutes looking around the park, and I couldn't find them hiding anywhere. Not in the regular spots, not by the big tent, not down by the water, not by the boathouse. Couldn't find them anywhere. I actually had to go ask the parents. I uh, went and visited them at their, at their campfires and I said, Do you guys know where your kids are? I said, It's after 11 and I can't find them every, anywhere. And so most of them were saying, Oh, they're in the trailer sleeping. So I guess I tuckered them out pretty good. So the downside to that when I was at that fire um, one of the people at the fire was saying that they 
recognize the name of the bike, Jamis, after a woman named Janice. And Janice's husband apparently lost a bike just like this. And so I'm going to find out this weekend whether, you know, that be the case or not. And if it does belong to somebody here, then I'm certainly going to give it back. Or because it is a very expensive bike. So uh, we'll see what happens. So, but for now I've dubbed it the Swamp Monster. <laughs> and uh, it's worked pretty good. So uh, I, I had to make a minor repair on the pedal because uh, one night I took off and uh, stepped on the pedal too hard. And uh, I guess it w the bolt wasn't screwed all the way in and the pedal fell off. So fortunately there was no accidents there. But uh, So yeah, I, I tightened things up and uh, lubricated the chain and that sort of thing. And uh, So what else was it? Uh, oh, the derailleur doesn't work. So the gears don't change. And uh, what is it here? You can see I zip-tied these down. This is for the... Um, these are for the gears. So even though they have the click shift gears... They don't do anything. So there's one gear. Uh, there's 120 millimeters of travel on the front suspension um, and the chain skips. So climbing hills is uh, almost an impossibility, even small hills. Uh, so you know you put any effort into it and it, it skips or you know you you go down halfway on the forks and so you spend half your energy making the bike move up and down instead of forward. So uh, the other thing I was told too is that these brakes, which both work excellent, they're both disc brakes, and uh, they both work excellent. I'm told they're hydraulic brakes. So this is a little oil reservoir right up here, and these are not brake cables, but they go down. Let's see if I can get a shot here. They go down to a piston, and there's two little brake pads inside this assembly that squeezes the. Um, the disc brake. So it's the same thing on the front and the back. So yeah, the Swamp Monster does pretty good right now. Uh, like I said, it can't change gears and uh, can't go uphill very well. But uh, And if the owner wants it back, then by all means I'll give it back. But um, if he would like to donate it to the security team here at uh, the park, I would sure appreciate it. Anyways, I'm going to go for patrol, so we'll talk to you guys later. Hey guys, thanks for watching, and if this is your first time to my channel, please be sure to watch my past videos. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all the innovative ways that I make tenting easier and more comfortable. Comments and questions are always welcome, and you can also check my Facebook page for regular updates in between videos. Section 9212 of the McGillicuddy Code of Ethics states that you should like, comment, subscribe. Hey! Hit that button.